Good morning and welcome to the Leadership and Insurance Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Bond, um, and I'm very lucky to be joined by Herman from Beesurance. Herman, good morning. Well, I'm saying good morning because um, this is the ruse because we release it in the morning. I'm very conscious it's the afternoon. So good afternoon to you and good morning to everyone else. <laughs> How are you? Thank you, Alex. Thank you for having me on your on your podcast. Uh, nice weather in Vienna. And is it? Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not having a good day today in the UK. It's very dark. I even had to put some lighting in and it still feels a bit dark. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's the problem with the virtual background is that if I don't light myself, then um, I disappear. But then if I do light myself, I look like I've sort of got some sort of small halo going on. So I have to be very careful. Um, but no, so good weather in Vienna. Very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so um, if you'd be so kind, um, obviously be sure it's, uh, and I know each other, but just for the people um, at home that may not know about be sure it's, if you'd be so kind as to introduce the, the business and, 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 and what you guys do. Sure. Yeah. Be sure is an intro tech based in Vienna, based in Vienna, but working in Europe. Uh, we are specialized in embedded insurance. That's what we believe in. That's what we do. We do nothing else. We do no B2C business, just embedded insurance. Our clients come from financial institutions, retailers, energy companies, banks, and so on and so forth. Literally every company who has a large enough base of clients and has a product which is more or less insurable because our insurance products always relate to the main product. Mm-hmm. They are not sold on its own. Mm-hmm. That's very, that's very succinct. I, I, I think people have overcomplicated it. And I, and I think the simplicity of your kind of um, explanation leads into what I noticed about Beesurance very early on, because, you know, you've been very strict about this being a B 2 B to C offering. And I think some people are, are sort of doing that sort of a blended proposition where they're going to do some B to C, they're going to do some B to B to C. And, um, you know, what's the thought process in that? Is, is that simply be good at the one thing and be the best at that one well, thing? I, or? I, I'm, I'm not here to criticize uh, <laughs> our, our other fintechs in, in our small family still in, in Europe. Yes. Uh, and obviously, everybody's trying out things. I mean, it's it's not so clear which which way will work in the mm-hmm. especially in the insurance industry. Don't forget that uh, it might be different in Great Britain, but on the continent, especially in Austria, insurances are pretty much twenty years behind the banks in, mm-hmm. in terms of of digitalization. Mm-hmm. Um, could could give you some examples afterwards. Um, our idea is that we try to get digitalization done with at least with as little capital as possible. So we don't have those amounts of money, which for example, Lemonade spends on Google ads or on Facebook. So that's, that's the first reason we don't, we are not really into B, B, B2C, which uh, yeah, which asks for a lot of expenditure in in, in uh, advertisements, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I would like to remind everybody, especially if somebody from insurance companies is listening to us, that insurance, no matter how nice you describe it, it is still a boring product. <laughs> nobody nobody wants to. Buy, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, "Wow, today I'm gonna buy an insurance." Yeah. I mean, that, that doesn't happen. Um, and facing that or realizing that, we, we thought that it might be quite clever to make it invisible, not to work on it uh, on, on, on the basis like Lemonade or Koya are doing that, that and they do a, 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 a perfect job in what they do. They describe it very clear. They have a, a, a perfect customer journey. Everything is done properly, but it that doesn't doesn't change 
the basics of insurance, which is more or less boring. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for my person, I could talk with you for hours about my new uh, bike. Yeah. My new gravel bike, great theme. Yeah. But the insurance which I bought with it, I mean, it's just a necessity. It's like, I don't know, brushing your teeth. Yeah. So we, we are specialized in a way of selling insurance embedded as to make it invisible. Mm. So if you buy your bike and the insurance comes with it, it's much easier than you buy your bike. And after that, you, you have, uh, I don't know, six different kinds of insurances, mm -hmm. have to read hundreds of pages of, of TNCs, uh, compare the insurances with very tiny differences. Um, that's not what, what people like to do when they're in their scarce spare time. Mm. And so we think that uh, the offering of an embedded solution in those cases where it's possible uh, is a better solution for the client mm -hmm. and also quite good for those institutions who do that, for retailers, for energy companies, or so whatever. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's, I was thinking, um, I'm going to dispute you on the boring, uh, but I would do because I'm a man that has a podcast out every week on insurance. So uh, it, I, I can't, I can't accept it's boring. But no, I joking aside, I, I, I think that's absolutely true. I mean, we said just before this recording started that you know I, I'm so intolerant of buying my insurance. I hate the process of it, whether it's for my business or whether it's for my personal, um, you know, insurance. I'm probably the worst person in the world for not reading the. Uh, terms and conditions, um, which which it, for me it's about the reduction of pain. It's re, it's it's reducing the pain points, and I know it's kind of a nuance on the same point, but I think I think it's exactly what you you've done very well, and and what embedded insurance does very well is that no one wants to buy it, no one wants to shop for it. We just know we need it, and we want to have it in as painless a process as possible. You know, it's like um, you know why does everyone uh, why would everyone really prefer to travel by private jet? I don't think it's the, it's the traveling by private jet. It's the fact that you don't have to queue at the airport. You know, that's what you want. You want to be whisked from A to B as quickly as possible. And that's what you're paying for. Um, and that's why people enjoy it so much. And I think it's a similar thing that the journey of buying insurance, if you can embed for me to buy my bike and buy my insurance at the same time, or, or, or anything like that journey, then, I'm going to buy into that. We, we might get to that later, but don't forget that also the how people realized how easy shopping could be, especially now during the lockdown. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, internet shops, they skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. They all have very good or excellent uh, shopping experience. Mm -hmm. And that isn't delivered by insurers. No. Still not. No. And now you're, you're in a situation where, I don't know, 20 years ago, you were used to, to have some hassle in, in buying some things, but now it's so easy. It's just a, mm. a, a few clicks and the stuff is at your front door, mm. which doesn't, till now, it isn't that in insurance. And that's mm. something which should be delivered because it is, it is, it is asked and it's uh, people... Yeah, they're used to it. They're yeah. used to the kind of quality. Yeah, I, 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 I completely agree. Um, and I think there's definitely a conversation that I, I, I've, I've had a few times on several issues about insurance is that insurance, definitely probably 10 years ago, we discussed insurance in a way that this is the model, this is the way it is. Um, if you tried to challenge it, it was like, it doesn't work like that. Um, and, and it was trying to operate in a vacuum. And my, my, my point that I've made on several uh, different, you could apply it to any industry, is that your experience as a consumer impacts how you view everything in the world. So my experience with Amazon impacts how I view the delivery of my takeaway service or buying my insurance. It has to. Um, and then when you set the bar so 
efficiently as Amazon. I mean, I was just, I was smiling as you were saying that because I'm definitely one of those people that if I can't have something delivered tomorrow, I will find another supplier that can deliver it tomorrow. You know, <laughs> my decision making is, my tolerance for time has, has reduced so dramatically that I make those decisions. But um, before I, we get further into it, we, we had this question that I thought I was going to ask you at the start. And I think this, we've probably started to touch on quite a lot of it now, which was that, you know, embedded insurance has been, if parametrics was the buzzword of 2020, and it's probably still a bit in 2021, embedded definitely appears to be the thing that I've talked about almost more than anything else in, in Yep. Th this year you know what what is that what is driving that is it is it sort of the the tech stacks caught up is it cultural or i presume it's, it's a lot of other things but why do you think now particularly is such a kind of um weight behind embedded insurance well i, I mean first factor as, as i mentioned i'm pretty sure was the lockdown and the, the, the skyrocketing uh, internet retailers uh, business. Mm -hmm. um, home office will stay, that's pretty sure, one way or the other. Uh, and so will the, will, will the level of internet purchases. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will increase demand and supply of, the, of, of embedded insurance. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that, that, that's one reason. And the second is the, the reason you, you just mentioned that customers are more and more used to this availability, comfort, security uh, of, of internet purchases. So, I mean, it might be better in other countries. In, in Austria, you usually you sign a, an insurance contract and you wait 14 days to, to get the policy delivered. And that's just, yeah, you're, you're laughing, but it's, and it's, and it's just data. I mean, it's, it's not a... It, they, they print it out, they send it by post, and it takes them 14 days. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, it's unheard of. Yeah. Um, so, buying ins insurance is still complicated, time consuming, analog. And this is the reason why embedded insurance will, will continue to flourish mm. because that's all we avoid. Mm -hmm. Our offerings are not complicated they are not time consuming and they are of course digital and not analog and you definitely don't wait 14 days for the yeah. delivery of your policy which comes real time yeah per yeah. mail as you expect that today yeah yeah i mean it's that stuff that stuff so crazy to think about that you still have that experience with any um, with anything no no i have to <laughs> um just i mean the, the, i think that the, the main point is who is the client mm. and insurance companies are very client orientated the question is who is the client mm -hmm. and the client for insurance company is the broker mm. not the end client Mm -hmm. They have wonderful systems to service the broker. The broker doesn't wait for 14 days for, a, for, a, for all his uh, information. Mm -hmm. He gets it real time. Mm -hmm. So they, they are able to do so, but the end client is not their, their purpose. It's not their, their focus. And we, of course, focus the end client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's something in that then as well? Because if you look at, let's just take digital retail as one example, but, but any online businesses, you know, digital retail is built with a much greater customer centricity uh, and consumer. Con so, so they're already aligned with the thinking. Um, and in a way, it kind of, it, it, it's exactly the reason why embedded is, is a, is not just a good solution, um, from an insurance point of view, from an insurance company point of view, to make money, it's a it adds value to the the offering from you know from some a retailer. So if you're buy, let's take that bike example, if you're if you're selling a bike, and then you could also sell me the coverage that's good and efficient and it's there, then it just adds to that buying experience. So they're they're already sort of committed, whereas the sort of incumbent insurance class still have this kind of 
duality of relationship where they are might be broker broker centric um yeah i mean so there's something about the values of the these kind of online retailers that are kind of in line with um embedded more than a kind of traditional insurance company yeah and for i mean very easy for an insurance company there's no difference their mm. their relationship to the end clients is now not very close Mm-hmm. And it won't be very close if they sell embedded insurance because sure. in that case, the retailer is between them before it was the broker. So mm-hmm. how do we, um, I, I had this question that I've always kind of thought about, about embedded insurance in that, and I don't know where this might be, you know, the, the limitations of what you guys um, concern yourself with, with, with your product, but how do you think we tra- tackle trust? in embedded insurance um because i don't i don't know what i i I haven't tested the limits on this yet but i'm thinking who would and i wouldn't buy from in terms of an insurance you know do do, do people have to have a certain level of brand do you think there's certain businesses that are never going to make it work um yeah i suppose how do we I just just wonder what your thought processes were on that because you know we trust insurance companies because they're a bit boring because they've been around for two hundred years. Do I trust Nike to sell me? I don't know personal accident insurance, or do I trust my camping supplier to trust me to sell me travel insurance or something? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, f- f- first of all, there is always an insurance company behind. Still, of course, yeah, of course. So we we might uh, tackle that or discuss that that issue later. But even Apple, a large, very large company, a very large, one of the largest companies in the world, they use an insurance company to cover for Apple Care. Yeah. So there is still an insurance company behind. Uh, second, um, and uh, I, I might go to, to car dealers, which is a, a very fine example. Uh, may I trust my car dealer selling me insurance? So first answer is there won't be any car dealers soon. Yeah, That's true. the first thing to, to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, true. And just to, to make that very clear, Mercedes, I don't know about Europe, but I know about Austria, they, uh, they canceled every car dealership contract in Austria. Wow. Full stop. In Austria, you're only able to buy a Mercedes car via internet directly by Mercedes. Wow. So the next step will be, of course, and they are working on that, to buy with that car the insurance. Mm. And my point would be that if you trust that Mercedes is a decent car because you buy one and it's not cheap, you might also have no problem with their insurance, mm-hmm. which, by the way, will be done by, I don't know, Allianz or whoever, mm-hmm. one large uh, international working uh, insurance company. But to, to answer that on a, on, a, on a broader perspective, of course, insurance has something to do with trust. Mm-hmm. You're, you're absolutely right. And you are already at a dealer because you trust him with your with, with the goods you, you you buy there. So at the first glance, there shouldn't be any problem in also trusting him not to offer you insurance because he's not an insurer, but to sell you insurance. Yeah. And second, of course, the trust has to be earned. So the merchant or financial institution, whoever, has to show that the sold insurance will fulfill its promises. That's, I mean, if if that doesn't work, the trust will be gone within seconds. Mm -hmm. But I I don't see a a real problem with it. And and going back to Mercedes, I'm pretty sure you trust, if, if if you are a Mercedes enthusiast, I'm pretty sure you're, you're, you're good covered with a Mercedes uh, insurance coverage. Mm-hmm. I think trust is an interesting thing to discuss in insurance anyway, particularly on the, um, you know, the, 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 the personal lines side of things, because most people probably go through their life paying for insurance and not claiming. 
or claiming on very few occasions. Yeah. And then you've got this classic conundrum, and, and this is very old data, but I remember working in retail, and uh, part of our training was that we were told that a customer who had a good experience told on average three people, and a customer who had a bad experience um, told on average eight people. And that was that was before the internet and social media. Yeah, it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it, I, I mean, I think that a lot about comparison sites because you know, I I don't do this, but I know people that write reviews, but they only ever write reviews when they've had a terrible experience and they're angry about it, so they write one. So I'm always quite interested in trust because I I wonder how much the sort of general public trusts insurance anyway. Um, so I wonder whether I think about that proposition, but you're right. If I trust someone to buy a Mercedes, then I'm probably going to trust Mercedes to provide the insurance. So it's just a case of, it's about uh, the, the businesses looking to sell embedded insurance just need to be the right businesses. So I wanted to ask you from a B-surance point of view, do you do, do, do partners reach out to you? Do you reach out to partners or is it a combination of the two? Um, it's definitely a combination. We have cases where, the partners come to us. It's uh, in, in some cases we go to the partners and tell them about solutions we already developed. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, also insurers come to us mm -hmm. because they have already partners but are not able to deliver solutions like we have. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, if uh, most of insurance companies in Austria, I know in well, I think in, in, in Great Britain it, it could be different, are not able to produce a real-time policy mm. that's simply not not possible in their old IT systems. We mm. we run our own uh, insurance uh, system where we are able to do so. Mm. Mm. And don't forget, some of these embedded insurance solutions are very very small policies. I mean, we sold a, a, a dental a dental coverage with a toothbrush. Uh, which is only, I think, the, the premium is 50 cents per month. Right. So if you start in that case, filling out paper and sending it by post, <laughs> the premium of the first one and a half year is gone. So yeah. it's simply not, not, not manageable. Yeah. I, I know, and those, those micro opportunities as well are really fascinating for me because you know, you just wouldn't have been able to offer that on a profitable basis. So, so it's, I, I see it, it, it's such a value add to the insurance ecosystem, um, particularly when, you know, there is a threat to not insurance companies, but the, the ecosystem as a whole, there, there's little bites being taken out of it. You think about parametric solutions and, some of those are providing, this, you know. This, this dental insurance was a parametric uh, insurance. Was it? And all the parametric insurances, they, they, they work on a, on a digital basis. Otherwise, it's, it's not possible to, to offer them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's fascinating because a, a lot of the stuff I've talked about with parametrics, um, whether it be, um, you know, we've had a few people on the podcast and you know, a lot of it is the alternative capital, um, hedge funds, et cetera, are quite interested in it because it works it works more neatly in that in that sort of um, environment. Um, you, you've got this kind of death by a thousand cuts thing about um, insurance companies as they are, if they don't enhance their offering and do new lines. And, you know, things like you, the example there, um, you know, the, the, the level of um, premium is so small that if it's not if it, if it wasn't for an embedded op operation, you wouldn't be able to offer it. You, it would be, be meaningless. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but you, can, you, can, you can add these things up. Um, I wanted to ask you about regulation um, because that's, that's, how does that impact embedded insurance, um, borderless trade? Um, I know it's another unsexy topic. <laughs> as as I, I, um, I, I told you before, I worked in a large insurance company. I was in, in those days responsible for sales and I had to introduce IDD in our company. So I'm quite aware of these, these issues. So to, to say it quite frankly, it's, it's less a problem than a burden. I right. mean, regulations, um, even, even as there is an EU IDD regulation, 
still very national orientated mm. and do not reflect uh, the necessities of, of uh, borderless internet solutions. So, and th this is also the reason why most insurance companies or branches of insurance companies are very national orientated. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have cases where our customers sell their goods in, I don't know, in three different countries. And it's very hard to find a, one insurer who offers insurance in three countries. So um, that's something which we have to discuss on a, on a European Union level, mm -hmm. because it's still very national. Uh, this, 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 the risk effect that the, the, the IDD is an EU regulation, but still every national law sets little bit different rules, which makes it very hard for us. But on the other hand, that's our advantage to those who are not in this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it also kind of the protective shield of the traditional insurance um, capacity providers against, let's say, um, less traditional forms of capital? As, um, as, as I come from one of those large uh, incumbents, no, they hate the IDD as we do. So yeah, yeah, it's it's not the thing they they wished for or they asked for. No, but because because how much of a threat do you think embedded represents to the traditional? Because look, I know most embedded offerings are, you know, a traditional insurer is behind it. It's being offered because the customer is owned by the maybe let's say a retailer and they're selling um, they're selling an insurance proposition. But realistically, um, as long as there's enough capacity behind it, it could be offered by, you know, an alternative or a new entrant or... And, and no, no matter what, a lot of the value chain will be cut off. Mm. So, I mean, it, it's definitely a threat. But for me, it seems that most of the incumbents do not see it. Yeah. They, they simply, I mean... <laughs> they, 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 they don't see it coming. It, it's, for me, it seems a little bit like this uh, uh, famous Kodak example where they mm. didn't see the, the possibilities of, of digital photography. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, they, they will lose some, some parts of their value chain. Um, but, but don't forget, as I, as I explained before, uh, even Apple, largest company on the, in the world, is using an insurance company to organize, settle, and do everything for their Apple uh, Apple Care. Yeah. In that case, it's AIG, and that has to do with with a couple of, of factors. One is that, of course, Apple could use their capital much mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. in 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 doing more business with Apple things than investing it in, in a very capital intensive uh, uh, insurance company. And so I'm pretty sure they decided it's better to, to let that run by somebody else. Profits are not that high. So uh, it, it won't be any threat for an insurer that, that Amazon or, or uh, Apple will, will start an insurance on their own. Mm -hmm. But of course, there will be some cutoffs of, of the value chain. That, yeah. that will happen yeah but that's and that's the thing isn't it i think i think it's more about um we've discussed a few times on the podcast about the really this has got boring now that the the the, 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 the our oh, insurance is broken statement by every new insure tech that says oh it's in broken it's broken and i and and it's like no but there's there's gaps in the value chain there's 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 because the the world and um I spoke to George uh, Beasley, Be Beasley and he made this point really well is that, that insurance is very good um, at insuring what it was built for, um, which was tangible assets. And now we move into kind of a, an intangible world. Um, we are struggling to deliver on that. And then I would also say that just, just the landscape in which that we're building it, as we've talked throughout this conversation about what the customer expectations are, um, Insurance is just simply not built for that world. However, 
that world does offer huge opportunities. Um, but yeah, I, I have a just a slight concern that there's, you know, we are still talking in 2021 about being sent paperwork, taking 14 days to happen. That that's that's a real world that happens today. Um, and it's frightening to see. Um well, as, as, as far as they, obviously, they don't have those challenging companies like they have in the bank sector. Mm. Mm. I mean, my, my, my easiest example is just imagine you have a bank account where you don't have the possibility to look, to look up your, 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 your banking sheet via internet. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. And insurers are like that still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But due to the fact that there is no, no large insurance uh, digitalized yet, they still think they have time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. But still, that there will be, I, I, I don't see it that, that pessimistic because still the, the core of insurance is a very specialized, very capital intensive uh, 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 industry, which they run very good. Mm. And it, I, I don't see anybody who could do that in, in that way. Mm. Well, we've seen that. I mean, talking about the high profile successes, um, and, and I, lose, I use that from a kind of investment point of view, um, the biggest insure techs that we're seeing globally aren't returning profits on on their insurance model you know they may be from a kind of investor standpoint delivering you know excellent ipos and, and great share prices but at the moment that the, the delivery of profit from a kind of underwriting perspective is just not there so it's difficult to argue that insurance is broken it's just it knows what it's doing very well yep. but it's customer delivery or customer centricity isn't there um my my thing with insurance companies is is you know most of the, the this podcast is talking about innovation and change and I, I think I came to the I don't know how sort of easy this is to do but I almost felt like splitting it off and saying right we have a capital base that we use as an insurance company and we're going to effectively build a digital insurer from the ground up those are the models that seem to work absolutely absolutely agree uh, the I mean, the, yeah, again, the Kodak example. I mean, the, the story is that the, the, the guy who ran uh, analog pho photography, he always said, I earn 99% of our profits. Yeah. So I decide who gets the money, which is understandable. And the same happens today in insurance companies. I mean, they make 99% of their profits with brokers and... Uh, uh, staff which they have in, in their sales department. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you start there, an um, um, uh, uh, internet solution that can't work. So you mm -hmm. have to have a, a own company which does that on their own. Mm -hmm. And of course, they don't have to, to have their own insurance license. They could take the coverage from the mother company, mm -hmm. but you can't run that within within an, an, an incumbent that's no. i think that doesn't work yeah i mean just Examples like like alliance direct shows that it didn't work yeah yeah i just i'm mean, just that conversation there like it's, it's about sales and you know insurance is sold not bought and and and, and we live in a world where that, that's something we try to turn around yeah exactly added insurance this is not sold it's bought yeah exactly and, and therefore our sales uh, 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 costs are, yeah, they are nearly to zero. Yes, yeah, because it's bought. Yeah, That's a big difference. Yeah, it's 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 such a fundamental shift, and um, the industry's. It, look, some people are going to get it right, and some people are, are really not going to get it wrong. But it's it's fascinating for me because yeah, on all sides of the insurance spectrum, whether you talk about reinsurance whether you're talking about large pnc commercial whether you're talking about um personal lines we just see this kind of lag behind you know 
investment banking changed dramatically in what the 80s when it went fully electronically traded and the profile from someone who works in the recruitment industry what i find interestingly is, is how quickly the profile of what a banking professional looked like and you were replacing salespeople with uh data scientists and kind of uh, people who could code and in insurance I'm, we're just not seeing that change in in what the profile of that person looks like. Yet the world in, and around it is changing much much quicker. Um, and it seems to me personal lines is changing much much quicker because customers are demanding it. But particularly where we seem to be lagging is is in the, is in the commercial space and in and in the, the reinsurance space. And again, coming back to that broker driven model, that's the most broker centric part of it. And it's interesting how, funnily enough, that's the slowest part that appears to be changing. Um, but you've got to be incentivized to change. And, and, and the Kodak moment, you know, they were very profitable until they weren't very quickly. Um, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to justify as a publicly traded company saying we're going to we're going to reinvest in changing our whole business model um, to, to, to deliver. Um, but I, I won't get on my high horse about uh, uh, <laughs> certainly certainly not as a, a consultant to the sector, because that, that, yeah. that seems like I'm, I, I'm hanging myself out to dry there. But Herman, really conscious of your time. So I just wanted to sort of uh, sort of sort of draw this in. Yeah, what's next for Beesurance, um, you know, European-wide? Are we going to go outside of that? Is there anything we should look out for from you guys? Or, um, um, yeah, what's what's coming up on 21-22? Yeah, we, uh, we see now, unfortunately, the, the, the pandemic uh, wasn't very good for our business. So everybody had other issues, like uh, some were in panic mode. Mm -hmm. like uh, tourism mm. some uh, couldn't handle the the massive increased turnover like bike industry uh, and some couldn't produce because they they the lack of of of, of products mm -hmm. uh, so the the last year wasn't wasn't that easy but we see now as hopefully the pandemic is ending that the interest starts again. We have very promising uh, projects running now with uh, large financial institutions, especially financial institutions, card companies, retailers, uh, furniture companies, mm. for example, which uh, in, the, in the past wasn't the field for insurances, mm -hmm. but they made tremendous business these days. Um, and we, we're looking forward to, to broaden up the possibilities of embedded insurance. We, I mean, we, we are not that, we're not that far in that project, but still we, we talked with uh, uh, large house owners who have their complete uh, renting system digitalized. Mm -hmm. And for them, it would be very easy to put in an insurance with it. And they are interested. So we will develop that because till now, uh, household insurance wasn't embedded but I'm pretty sure it will be in the future. Mm. Mm. I, I, I can't see, I think it's very difficult to see a personal line insurance that isn't embedded in the future. And, and you know, the, the, it's just, it's just, you don't need insurance about something until you've got an insurable asset. So at the point, and, at the point at which you buy- the point of sale, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the point at which you buy that asset or, or that, the, you know, you, that's when you should be buying it. So um yeah it, it makes perfect sense I, I was making i bought a house in 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 lockdown um and it's strange to me still that i'm not being sold insurance along that process you know yeah, life insurance to cover mortgage you know yeah. it's yeah household contents there's so many opportunities um that it just seems a miss as well um and, and and from a customer point of view it's just it's a pain. It's another thing I've got to go out and do. Um, and, and particularly when a lot of these insurances are driven by price. Um, they're, they're very price sensitive, particularly in the UK, a very price sensitive market that if you'll deliver, if you deliver me an insurance within a price bracket, a tolerance, I'm, I'm going to buy it. So um, it's just about how easy you can make it. You're, you're happy to get rid of the problem. Yes, yes, yeah. 
Yeah, but then I'm 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 an e I'm an easy person to sell to, so maybe I'm the wrong example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, Herman, thank you so much for your time. That's that's it's been great to, to speak with you. Um, it's very kind of you to give up your time uh, to talk to me today. So um, thank you so much, and thanks for being a guest. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you.